What's going on? Well, um, you have made so much difference in my life.、Um, I love learning. We're not making the difference. You're making the difference, but we've got a steady bag of marbles. We got a stubbornly steady bag of marbles, and so every now and again, your marbles match ours, and you go, "Ah,、oh, I can see that." And then every now and again, your marbles match up. Ah, I can see that. And before long, you really get how it all works. You're the one making the difference because your desire is there. You were born intending this. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I get, and we take the compliment. We appreciate the appreciation. We're not trying to slough it off. We just want you to know that it's you. I do understand the teachings、uh, pretty completely all the way. A、uh, couple of things are clarifications. Resistance.、Um, a while ago, I started understanding that you learn to let go, allow. Uh, Can you stop just for a moment while we clarify something that helps、sure. with what we've talked about?、Sure. Let's not call resistance. Let's not point at it like it's bad. Let's just call it a contradictory thought to our dominant intent right now. A lot of people can go about things in a lot of different ways, and their different ways will work for them. So we're not debating about right ways to do things or even right things to want. We're just saying that when you discover that you want something, you do not want to offer contradictory thought, which is singularly. What resistance is? Resistance is only you offering contradictory thought. Now, in a larger scheme, resistance you could say we say it all the time. When you ask for something, your inner being collects it on your behalf, knows it, and never deviates from the satisfying fulfillment of that. When you notice you don't have it yet, you're resisting. When you think you're not ever going to get it. You're resisting. When you are jealous of somebody else who's got it, you are resisting. If you are praising someone else who's got it, you're not resisting. You have to just feel your way to know in any moment in time whether you're lined up or not. It's sort of like electrical power. I get it. I get it.、Um, absolutely. So the next level of where I am right now is, as far as again resistance, I feel that. Resistance is not a bad thing. No, from it's just an unhelpful thing in a moment in time when it opposes a desire. We've been saying from the beginning of Esther finding words for us: when you have a desire and a belief that are the same, there's no resistance, and so your desire is going to flow into your experience fast. And sorry for interrupt. One of your teachings is you can't get there from here, and if you're here. If you want to be there, there will be a resistance. But here isn't a place. Here is a vibrational frequency. You can't hear what's being broadcast on ninety-eight point six, or is that your temperature? You can't <laughs> listen to what's being broadcast from one hundred and one if you're on a different channel. Your frequencies have to match up.、Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And what we started with today. That is usually what trips people up is that they think that they're talking about money when they're talking about the absence of it. Esther and Jerry were sitting on the porch. It had been a long drought. It was hot, middle of the summer. Everything was dry. All of the deer and the rabbits and the squirrels were all scrounging around trying to find something wet to eat or something wet to drink. And they were sitting on their front porch. And Esther said, "Abraham, I want some rain." And we said, "Why do you want some rain?" And Esther said, "Look at this place. Everything's dried up. The ground's all cracked. The rabbits are thirsty. The deer are thirsty. The trees are droopy. Everything's dirty." And we said, "You're not telling us why you want rain. You're telling us why you don't like drought. It's a big difference. Why do you want the rain? Because it feels good on our skin.、It、smells good.、It、softens the soil." Yeah. And again, I'm not saying resistance is bad. It's a good thing, but from more of a, I don't know if if I should say a scientific or more direct wave. If I'm here, and if I would like to, or if, if this is where I am, but where the person wants to be is here, often we program ourselves in a way that we don't know how to get there, or not knowing what we don't know. So let's talk about how to do it. Wouldn't Let that be a resistance to go there? Just by letting it go, they don't know how to get there. 
So are you talking about yourself or somebody you're trying to teach? Myself, and I see it everywhere. Okay, so give us an example of what's here where you want to be and what's here where you are. Tell us. Mm -hmm. We'll show you. What's the subject? Pick a subject. Reaching a place in your mind where... No. What is it you want to manifest? More money. All right. It's a good thing because it affects so many aspects of your lives. And where did you put money when you held your hands in the air? Where did you put money? Here? You said you want to be here and you're here. So is money here? And if I should go back, it's not even money. It's what the money can give me and what money allows me to get. All right, so we're going to get there. So I want abundance and I want the freedom that abundance can give me. Does that statement sit better with you? It, more clearly, see, I would like see, to create a world where people are more well and they achieve We'd like you to do wellness. that too, but you better do it for yourself first. You got to show yourself how it works before you can imagine anybody else doing sure. it. So you want abundance and what does abundance feel like? Free of limitations. Um, well then that's when we say you can't get there from there. If abundance feels hard, then it's going to take a while. We've played games with many of you over time. Make a short list of things that you're not practiced in resistance about and go out for an afternoon and ask the universe to line you up with it. When you see in the absence of resistance how easy it is for it to just be shown to you. Esther's watching television last night at the same time she's talking to someone and she says, I know what you mean, jelly bean. And at that moment, jelly beans were on the television screen. <laughs> now, that's a rendezvous. So the question is, were the jelly beans going to be on the television screen before Esther said, I know what you mean, jelly bean? Yeah, but Esther wasn't going to say, I know what you mean, jelly bean. We're talking about rendezvousing with what you want. Most people are rendezvousing with the absence of what they want while they are talking about what they want. And that's what resistance is. So how are you going to find a way to rendezvous with what you want. You have to find the feeling place of what you want rather than the feeling place of the absence of what you want. We know this feels like slow going, but when it breaks through, you'll feel what we're getting at. And so what does abundance feel like? You see, you can't answer that question because you couldn't answer the first question because you're not sure you want to let abundance in your life if you can't let abundance in everyone's life because it doesn't feel fair to you that you should be the receiver of abundance if everybody can't. So we can't even get this party started with you. So that's why you want to say, I want everybody to have abundance, but you cannot be the point of attraction for everybody. All you can be is the point of attraction for you. And through the clarity of your example, you can teach it to others. Jerry always said, I want them to know what their options are. I just want them to know what their options are. He knew that he couldn't create everybody's experience. And so you could say, instead of abundance, I seek clarity if it's an easier thing for you to allow yourself to have. But the resistance that you have is that you're not letting yourself have what you want because you've been listening to so many people complain about those who have in comparison with those who have not. And this is the thing that is going wrong with so many people. In your defense of those who have not, you become one of them. It can't be otherwise. You can't get sick enough to help sick people get well or poor enough to help poor people be prosperous or confused enough to help people find clarity. You've got to know what you don't want and know what you do want. So why is poverty so unpleasant? People are struggling. People are working too hard. People are sleeping very little. People are sacrificing. People are not getting a good night's sleep. People are physically hurting. People are not able to take care of themselves. That's enough of that. We know what you don't want. What is it that you do want? I want people to 
thrive. I want people to feel happy. I want people to feel energized. I want people to feel possibility. I want people to feel their own worthiness. I want people to know that they can have it. I want people to find that grace of God that so many of them talk about that they don't understand is really meant for everybody. I want them to find that feeling that lets the good stuff in. And as you have that conversation about that and you feel better, now you're on that wavelength. So now, for the time that you maintain that, it might only be for a few minutes, as you get out into the world, we are certain that your bag of marbles will match you up with somebody who's playing with their dog in the park and having a good time with their kid, saying something nice to somebody on the street, yielding in traffic. In other words, the universe will demonstrate to you, moment by moment, what is active and dominant in your vibration. So you say, hey, this is pretty good. As I'm wishing the world to be a happier place, I'm seeing more happy things in the world. But I could also look really hard for the unhappy things and we say, why would you do that? Why would you calibrate to what's not working and let that be what the universe matches you up with? You have to establish a frequency consistently enough that you know unequivocally that you get how you feel. And not only that, but that you can control the way you feel. And once you show yourself that you can control the way you feel, then things line up for you. And then before you know it, others are noticing and asking, and noticing and asking. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next